This is the second video in the series about showing you how to make tilings using regular polygons. You should hopefully have watched the first video that showed you how to get started and use GeoGebra to build your tiling pattern up and this is the result of that pattern. So you can see we, we actually started here that on the, the original video. Um, we have a square, a triangle, a square and a hexagon next to it. Um, all around one vertex and if we look at any vertex we have the same sequence of polygons we have square triangle square hexagon so our pattern's been developed here to fill a bit more space now before we get started in making this look a little bit more pleasing because at the moment we've got these big gray dots and all our polygons are the same color we're going to deal with that but before we do that now just one thing to line your shape up you'll see these blue dots these are the uh, the original shapes that we use to create our tiling pattern to create our first polygon and if you don't like the size or orientation of your shape at the moment um, choose the move tool this arrow here in the corner it's the, the move tool click on that and then you can click and drag either of these points and you can uh, change the orientation of the pattern and you can change the size of it by moving those around and because all the rest of the shapes are dependent on those two points they will all change with it. It's a good idea to get the lines horizontal um, if you can so that our pattern has a, a pleasing layout to it. Once we've done that we're going to go about removing those grey dots at the vertices and we're going to colour the different polygons in different colours and this video is going to show you how to do that. The first thing we're going to do is to remove all the dots and to do that we need to select them all. There's a number of ways to select them all. You can go to edit and then if you look down it has select all as an option but it tells you there's a shortcut there control plus A on a PC or command A on a Mac. So if we choose that that selects everything and you can see it is all highlighted there. We now need to change the properties to hide these grey points and this is a little bit a little bit more complex. There's a number of ways we can do that. We can. The quickest way is to right click and you'll see we get the object properties box come up. We can also get that through the edit menu, object properties there, or it says control E. I wouldn't recommend using the control E or command E option um, because it does mean you have to press something else. So um, object properties, we'll choose object properties and our object properties come up. Just drag that into the screen so we can see it. Now you have a long list down the left hand side of all the objects. This is, first of all, all the points. These are all the vertices at the corners. If we scroll down, these are the shapes themselves, the polygons. And we scroll down below that, and you can see all the segments. These are the lines that form the edges of the polygons. So we want to select just the points, and we're going to hide those. So if you click on Point, you will see that the points still say gray, stay grayed, selected. But if we scroll down, the polygons are no longer selected, so we've just chosen the points. And we want to hide the points, so if we go to Basic, and where it says Show Object, if we remove that checkbox. Now this does take a few seconds because there are an awful lot of points to clear, but if we just wait for a while, it'll take a couple of seconds, well, maybe a bit more than a couple of seconds. There we go, that's been removed now, and you'll see these dots are no longer highlighted. Um, as they are for polygons. So we can still see the polygons, um, we can't see the points anymore. If you really want to, you can actually hide the segments as well, although they don't make any difference, as long as the polygons themselves remain visible. So we can close that box down by clicking on the cross, and there you can see that our grey dots at the vertices have disappeared. The next thing we need to do is to colour in these polygons and we're going to use this is where you can get creative because you can use any colour scheme you like provided that you stick to the rule that every polygon of a certain number of sides must be coloured in the same colour. So we're going to start with the hexagons, there's fewest of those so I'll start with those first and I'm going to choose to colour my hexagons blue. So first of all I need to select all the hexagons. Now there's quite a few of them and doing this one at a time would take a while but I can multiple select so I'll click the first one and then I'm using a PC so I'll hold the control key down on a Mac I believe it's a command key if we hold that down and we can continue to click hexagons now when you select them the hexagon that's been selected the edges of it actually go uh, a slightly bolder color but it's quite difficult to see when your shapes are relatively small um, on a standard screen resolution so I think I've selected all all my hexagons there and again I go to object properties and I'm going to go to color this time and now I'm going to change the color so I want mine to be blue 
and I'm going to increase the opacity of it so that now they are completely shaded in blue. I'll just drag that out of the way and you can see what's happened there to my diagram. This actually doesn't wait for the dialog box to close. It does it in real time as you click on the options and then we'll close that dialog down, dialog box down. So all my hexagons are now blue. Um, the next thing to do, we'll do the triangles next, so um, I'll just click on that again so that I haven't got any hexagons selected and I'll start selecting my triangles, so click on the first one and then I need to hold the control or on a Mac the command button down. Now I don't need to do all of these in one go, if I want to just do a few and then change those, um, I can do that and of course I can do the object properties here, it's a lot easier. Um, and I'll make those yellow so those are coloured in. You'll notice I missed one there. It's not a problem if you miss them because you just go back and, and do the same thing again. I actually think I clicked on the, the line rather than the middle of the triangle there so it selected the line on the edge of the triangle rather than the triangle itself. But I can carry on clicking on them and I can do this a few at a time if I like. And there we go, we've coloured those in. I missed one again so let's get that one this time and the remaining few hope I've got them all this time. Yep. So all our triangles are now red. Sorry, all our triangles are now yellow. Uh, I'm going to turn the squares red. Um, and this is the fiddly one because there are quite a lot of the squares. I'm going to go around the outside first and do these, not try and do them all in one go because I'm pretty sure I'll either miss one or I'll end up clicking on it twice which will have the effect of um, not selecting it. So there's the ones around the outside. Um, and then I can do the ones on the inside and I'll do them one row at a time and it's not a problem if you make a mistake with any of these it's not a problem you can just go back and undo anything you've done and it will clear whatever you've done let's change those red um, let's get a few more um, one of the problems with this is of course if you do decide that you don't like your color scheme unfortunately there isn't a quick way to go and change them all you have to go back and do the same process again and manually select them one at a time this is looking um, quite dark at the moment you might want it to be some lighter colors so there we go we've clicked on those and there's a pake and there's just one that I've missed there so I'll color that one in and there you go and there's my tiling pattern completed and of course I could extend this I could make more of it I can do whatever I like with it now if I want to change the colors I don't like that color scheme I can go back and change the colors again